drop. Hey, hey. Good, how are you? Doing well. Excellent. Hello, chat room. Hey, Night Angel. How you guys doing in the chat? Well, today, we have me, Dashiva, Steel, stay high. Hey, hey. We have Memo. Hello. Is this your first time, Memo, on the EverQuest cast? No, I believe I've done one other. Okay. But you usually see him on our Star Citizen cast. But Memo... And then we also have Liet, our EXO, in our EverQuest Next Guild. And Hello! And welcome to the Bazaar. In this week's episode, we're going to be talking about a lot of things about Landmark and a little bit about their live stream, but then they took down the live stream, and so I couldn't catch the second half of what they talked about. But we can get started with their dev diaries and their roundtable questions and all that. And so then we'll just get right underway. They started off with the developer diary uh, a couple days ago or about a week ago about their advanced building tools. And so we're learning a lot about the game they're building, the tools that we're going to use in it. And so did any of you happen to get a chance to look at it or or see what they were talking about? I did. It was yeah. fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, um, you know... For them to be calling it advanced, it, it 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 actually doesn't. At least it doesn't look that hard. That's true. Now, granted, they're in there playing with it, but I love that it's only a couple button presses or you know manipulating just a little bit on the screen to mirror things to um, stay on grid, go off grid. It's really, really, really cool and um, gives you a extreme level of control I, th I think it's gonna be fabulous yeah so. and they were showing like all a lot of the tools about like the block making the corners and now it has like that dotted line that goes to the floor so you can see how deep the whatever block you're making actually goes or how far it goes through a wall and stuff and so it's really starting to make the tools look easy rather it, than it a little complicated it always looks easy when I'm watching someone else do something like <laughs> that, but I can pull myself back from that and go, is that really as easy as it looks, or am I going to get in there and go, what? Well, I'm sure there's going to be like a learning curve, but like I remember when they had a lot of the um, they had a lot of the news outlets go play the game for a while, and they said it literally took them maybe 10, 15 minutes, and all of a sudden they, they started getting it. And they were able to use the tools, and that's that was before they had these tools that they were showing. But they were saying that once they got used to it, it became easy to build. And so it's the same with anything like Minecraft or whatever. Once you start learning your way around, then it's going to become easier. But th they sh one of the things I liked, and Liette mentioned, I think, was about the grid. Mm -hmm. like, Because everything looked like it was floaty, and you had to kind of like guess where everything was at first. But then now they have this grid where it like locks into place if you're trying to place something on the ground and you can make it so everything's symmetrical. But then you can also go back to freeform if you want to put stuff in a certain spot or a certain area. Um, they also answered just a, a lot of different questions a lot of people had from from past live streams. Whether you can bu your building can float and they showed that your building can just float anywhere if you want a floating cool. castle. Yeah, that is cool. cool. Um, painting. So what they mean by painting is you can change, so say if you have a block of dirt, you can change that to stone as long as you have enough stone to replace it. So if you're going to change it to stone, you need all your resources with that stone and then you get the resources of the dirt when you replace it. And so they s th that's what they said what painting was. It's just swapping one material for another and whatever that cube or whatever that um, sphere touches and you paint it everything within that will change as long as you have the resource which is kind of cool 
And then they talked about interactive props, which we're looking forward to, right? Like yes. Moving doors. Who knows what else they're going to come up with. Um, and when you think of interactive props, I think we talked about it last cast, but what would you like to see as b- besides doors or clickable Man, doors or something? I'll tell you what. I, I would like to see vehicles. Vehicles would be be what I'd like to see, like like wheels that actually turned. And when I say vehicles, I don't mean like cars or something, you know, like wagons or something. You know, I'd like to see boats. I'd like to see a boat that actually moved. And it'd be so cool if players could build their own ships and boats and everything like that. And that would be really neat. So, you know, when you talk interactive, that's that's what I think of as almost like mechanics. Yeah. Yeah. Things with self propulsion. Yep. <laughs> That'd be really sweet. Think um, gnomes and steampunk. <laughs> yeah, I know, like engines or stuff or moving parts that work. Like like in Steam. Minecraft how you can you can make circuits and everything and make start things move by clicking a button or something and so to actually build a machine or something that works that no one else would have built but you can use all the moving parts to build something in a game that would actually move or roll like your the wheels aren't going to just stay still and move across the land or something you know right i know what you're talking about and like so a water th- wheel or something yes and so the more interactive props coming we haven't seen any yet because they probably don't have them ready to show but we will see them and then they mentioned about flying in your plot so we've seen them like building your character could fly but you can only fly within one's plot so you're not going to be like superman or superwoman or whatever flying around everybody's plots or everywhere because that would take the immersion form out of landmark right you don't there's no reason for you to need to fly outside of your plot unless you're building something really tall now what I wonder how that works when you are uh, if you have permission to build on somebody else's plot. I'm not sure. That's a that's, that's a good question. question. <laughs> maybe, maybe maybe there's a permission to let someone else fly or something because if you're sure. <laughs> have to you build know. a scaffold. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, I don't know because um, that would make sense though because if you're helping build the guild hall or whatever or or someone else's building, you need to get up there too or. Or else it would be kind of a pain to have to climb or build yourself a, a block staircase to go on the side, like you said, a scaffold or something. But we'll see. There's obviously more questions to answer about all of those things. But now we'll move on to the roundtable questions. We have a new one this week, and then we're going to talk about a former one, which they answered in a roundtable response. And so the one for this week is in Landmark, to what degree should you be able to negatively affect other players in gameplay? So I don't know. In Grievance, we don't really think negatively affecting people. And so what did you guys choose? Did you guys happen to give this a little thought? See, my initial thought was, you know, all right, we got props. If my tavern, because, you know, I'm building a bar. As a guy, you know, they're acting up. I want a trap door that I could negatively affect other players with. Seriously, you know, if they're standing on the trap door and saying something dumb, I want to be able to be like, you're out! <laughs> <laughs> so in that respect, Nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sounds to me like somebody's about to get really trigger happy. Okay, so maybe like on your own <laughs> plot, right? Like, you mm-hmm. can negatively affect people on your own plot, but Memo, what were you going to say? It, going back to the, you know, the moving parts and the machines, you know, Take Liette's Tavern, for instance, setting up a series of traps. Someone steps on this button. This drops on, on top of their head and kills them. They're annoying. You pull a trap door out from underneath them. I think on your own plot, definitely. But, you know, the way we play games here, you know, someone coming through whatever we're building and leaving a path of destruction behind them, I don't think that really works for, for us so much. Yeah, and and a lot of things they were talking about are the only options they gave at the moment were just people on my friend list or people on my friend list, but in significant ways or limited ways, right? Or everyone in minor ways, or they want to be able to destroy and do everything, why, right? Why would you want to affect your friends negatively? <laughs> I, don't <know. laughs> that, I don't know. That doesn't or, sound or, like, it like or, a very or it seems good like, like a, like a, contr- <laughs> like a control, humorous. like yeah, a control <laughs> destruction. But I, but I, I see I see what you mean like on your own plot though because like once we're gonna have tools to maybe build our own quest right so obviously yep. you're gonna have to 
let someone get hurt in some way, right? If you build a, <laughs> an epic boss battle or something, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I see. mean, yeah. I kind of look at it as if you're just talking like player versus player or something. Maybe utilize the old SWG system where you could flag flag yourself or even old EQ where you could flag yourself PvP. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I just I, I know I don't want people going around and affecting me negatively. Yeah. It might you, not take that well. You have to, you have to flag <laughs> your, flag your plot PvP. <laughs> flag your plot. <laughs> And, you know, to an extent, we're not going to be able to help but negatively affect each other a little bit, at least as far as resources go, especially given they move around. So, you know, if so-and-so finds it first and player X was headed there and -and so-and-so's already mined it or taken down the tree, well, that just made player X run a little further and find more. Yeah. So that's going to be part of the game. And I feel like the props and very basic hey, we want you to be able to write your own story, you're going to have to be able to negatively affect people. So, it'll be there. Just uh, how they utilize it will make it really interesting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, like I, don't, I, I, don't, yeah, I don't really see any reason to negatively affect people all the time. Because like, you're going to be spending a lot of time building this stuff. Imagine just being able to go around and knock someone's tower down. and How are you going to rebuild that? Or Unless you save it, right? Unless you save the... Template. The, the template or whatever. But we'll see. Um, it'll be interesting to see what their response is to that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, but speaking of older ones that they responded to, um, they responded to the question, if a player sells an item to an NPC merchant, should other players be able to buy that item from the merchant? So if you remember like an old EQ, like if someone sold something to a merchant, like a really nice item or something, you can come around and be like... Who who would sell this to a merchant? Like, and you you could buy it for sixty so or sixty copper or whatever, and all of a sudden you had this really nice item that no one knew was such a nice item. But the options they gave is yes, in fact, merchants should be the only things that sell that other players have sold directly to them. So a merchants just sitting there to buy stuff, and they can only sell you stuff that a merchant or a real player gave to them. Or they say yes, social buyback options are fine. As long as the merchant also has static list of purchable, purchasable items, so kind of like what we see today, right? They have set list of things, but then you can have the list of things people sold to them. Or merchants should be able to sell items o- s- sold directly to them, but only if the original player has a time window in which to buy their stuff back. Or no merchant should have any have only a list of static items if players have a way of selling items it should be through npcs so what do you guys think of this old school like eq style or should we have like a newer uh modified i I like the i like the buyback option and uh, and the merchant has a list of static items but i also like the ability the time stamp on it you know okay you sell this to the merchant but it's not going to appear for an hour or two hours or something on the merchant's list. Uh, running a guild in EverQuest 1, I cannot tell you how many members every now and then would realize that they sold their dearest sword or their dearest shield or whatever to a merchant by mistake. And um, <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> it, um, <laughs> Yeah, and of course, item, automatically they run back to the merchant because it never failed. It was the one in front of Freeport. Never failed. And they'd run back to the merchant. Of course, they'd be gone. And obviously, they made somebody's day, but not theirs. Yeah, exactly. Oh. I would always hate that. <laughs> no, I clicked the wrong item. I remember Trass used to carry a big old... He used two one-handers, but he had a big old two-handed sword in his inventory. And... One day he realized about an hour after he went to that merchant that he didn't have that two-hander in that inventory anymore. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, yeah, he, he, he was not happy. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And so they did a roundtable response on it, and we have that video right here, and we'll see how they responded to this exact question. Hi, my name is Omid Dariani. I'm the senior brand manager for the EverQuest franchise. Welcome to the roundtable. With me today is lead game designer Darren McPherson. Hello. 
And we're talking about, so in EverQuest Next, if you sell an item to a merchant, uh, should other players be able to buy that item back from an NPC merchant? Right. And so a lot of the answers we saw, a lot of the responses were like, well, this worked really well in, in classic EverQuest. Uh, so why, like, why did classic EverQuest have this as a feature? You know, it's a, it's a, it, was, it was certainly fun to be able to go into the newbie yard, to be able to buy those rough hides that the players would, the newbies would inadvertently sell. They didn't know the value of them. As a crafter, you definitely needed those. Um, and uh, there wasn't a lot of advanced or we had commonplace yeah. now um, mechanisms for selling things. Yeah, like auction houses right. or, you know, that kind of thing. Like, they just hadn't been invented as concepts right. yet. And so this was a good way to facilitate trade, you know, if you couldn't find someone around. Right. And like, so as I was thinking about this, one of the things that struck me about it is the idea of going from merchant to merchant to merchant looking for these things is sort of fundamentally not social. Right. And um, you know, one of our one of our big emphases is are on um, player to player interaction and having uh, buying and selling between players is a major source of player interaction. So that's uh, something that we want to emphasize, and that's something that, that um, the social buyback things that you get with the uh, merchant uh, purchases um, is something that it, it gets taken away. Yeah, and so one of the other things that has come up a few times, and we did a live stream fairly recently where item durability came up, and people started talking about economic sinks. Right. And I think this is a really important part of of this discussion. Can you explain for someone who may not know uh, sort of how an MMO economy works and what a sink is? Right, so the item sink or resource sink, it takes something out of the economy that was put in there through player action. Um, typically things like when I do a quest or when I uh, loot, a, loot an NPC, I get an item. That item is in the economy now. And the more of those items that, that uh, accumulate, the, more, the, more, the less valuable that item becomes. We need to have, we call those faucets, so the faucets spill things into the economy. And we need to have sinks to pull those things out. Things like um, item decay, uh, item durability is a good example. Um, being able to sell things to merchants is also a major component in that. Uh, so those items effectively go out of the economy when you're done with them. You've exchanged them for coin. Uh, so. Yeah, so it allows us to fundamentally balance the economy uh, and it allows us to create social interactions. So. Even though this worked really well in 1999, uh, it's probably not a system for the future. Right. So, you know, this was a really important question for us, and your feedback was really valuable. You know, we're just getting into the discussions of the balancing of the economy and that sort of thing. So, the discussion on the forums really helped us kind of put that into perspective. So, thank you guys very much for participating. It was really helpful to us, and uh, thank you, Darren, for being with us. We'll see you next time on the roundtable. Thank you. So we see the response to this. Um, they most were responding that it worked really well in EverQuest, and but they kind of almost shot that down because, like I was saying, I, I thought it was really cool in EverQuest when you come upon a merchant and maybe I found Trash's sword, right? I can go, <laughs> I can go up and find this two-hander, and you needed to turn on your mic though, Steel, or unmute yourself. There we go. There you go, Steel. All right. But now I'm getting echo. Someone's echo. Okay. No, it's not echoing. <laughs> is that it? Is oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Steel, your mic is out now. Sorry, still learning the mechanics of this thing. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Welcome back. Cool beans. All right. But anyways, they said it was a good way to trade and everything if players weren't around to sell to NPCs. But when we think back to EverQuest 1 and like the beginning of EverQuest 2, they didn't have auction houses, right? Or the broker or any of these, um, what do you want to call them? Luxury things that we, we have now in modern <laughs> MMOs, right? And so what would be the point of having that now of it would almost take away from player interaction, right? If we were just selling to merchants and everything, we'd be talking to a merchant rather than interacting with player and interacting with the economy. So what do you guys think about their thoughts on that? 
I, I understand that. I do. I remember the the tunnel of row as as many of y'all do that 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 was even though it was in-game items that you found it really perpetuated a player economy there were hundreds of people that gathered at the tunnel of row and players sold directly to players mm -hmm. yeah and 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 what they probably trash his sword yeah but and but a lot of what they were mentioning though is okay that that can still happen that part the the interaction with the players and they encourage that but what's the point of merchants now having items that we sold to them when now we are, we're going to have a broker or we're going to have an auction house that we can sell to players any other thoughts memo or liet well, the you know the a game without an auction house is not something that we'll we'll ever see again um while it could be considered redundant, I think you know there's a place for both those systems. And, you know the community has changed as well. Having a completely player-driven economy where you have to get everything from other people, I don't know how that would work now with you know the way the community's changed from you know EQ1 to our current games. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean before it was acceptable, right? We didn't we didn't know better. We didn't know about auction house or right or all these luxury things, but and so if it took us an hour two hours to find items that we needed then that wouldn't fly today yeah not today <laughs> they'd be like i need to find it in like 20 seconds or else this game is terrible i'm gonna go play world of warcraft right <laughs> or something like that no <laughs> i do think it would be really neat if in landmark for example they would consider letting you set up a merchant say you know in your plot that is preloaded with stuff you've made that you want it to sell for you. Not necessarily putting it on the auction house, but that does get people moving around checking out different merchants. So that might be one way to integrate merchants in some fashion. Yeah. So yeah. just thought it'd yeah. be kind of cool. Like um, EverQuest 2. You'd get a mm -hmm. huge discount if you went to the merchant in somebody's house. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. Yep. It would be really sweet. Or if you needed an actual merchant hanging out somewhere selling your stuff to have it on the auction house mm -hmm. that'd be cool yeah i kind of i kind of I I kind of miss the the old uh the old bazaar remember in everquest one when uh what was that luckland Luke, came out? luckland yeah, yeah. luckland mm -hmm. and uh <laughs> i mean it, w it was a terrible idea though <laughs> because how laggy was that zone when yeah, but you know the, the idea like how, itself but, wasn't bad. Yeah, like how cool was that to like walk in and there's like literally everybody there is a real person selling something, and you mm -hmm. had to stay in your character there to sell it. And like I thought that was like the coolest thing. Like talk about player interaction, like mm -hmm. that was player interaction right there. It was cool. And sometimes you you try to talk to the person to see if they'd give you price off or something, see if they're actually there, if they're AFK <laughs> or whatever, and and you'd have to like stand on the corner or something because people could surround you and no one could ever see you again or and so you you want to stand in the best spot like that to me that was always like, a corner yeah <laughs> the, to me that was like one of the coolest things uh to walk into the bazaar to the bazaar and just see everybody there and like you actually felt like okay this is a massively multiplayer game yeah unfortunately with the rig i had i spent more time staring at the floor so i didn't lag out yeah exactly trying you, to just, get, you just trying look, to you get just looked down and you're like yeah, trying to did. find him yeah and you knew you knew how far you had to go just by staring at the floor after doing it so long <laughs> oh, <my gosh. laughs> oh it was horrible yeah the lag was but it was a really cool concept yeah but that was a step up from east common lands tunnel right torch yes. three torch four I'm right here. Come look Shady my swashbuckler. Way. Yeah, yeah. And so totally, totally different. But now we have just a nice interface where everybody can sell whatever at any time. And there's no need for those things anymore, right? Which is kind of sad. But they keep, trying, bit. To, yeah, they, keep, they keep trying to encourage player interaction, but then keep up with the modern conveniences that we all like. Uh, but they were mentioning that, um, well, the reason they're choosing to to not have these things is it's not social so they always want to encourage social interaction but they explained a little bit uh, about the economy and like what a, an economy sink is and so they explained how um, when players put stuff in the economy by whether it's a quest or they kill kill a bear or kill something and they get a pelt from that 
all of a sudden these items are getting flooded into like a faucet they're getting flooded into the economy so they need they need to create sinks in the game and so if you went and sold an item to a merchant and they could resell it that's not a sink it's just a no it's just holding it there and so eventually we're gonna have a million bear pelts in the game and they're never gonna get out of the game right people are just always gonna use them unless they craft with it right so maybe an item level like you know if we use the color system most most games do now today maybe an item level like greens greens and above or something yeah and and i think the main thing there because now they have to worry about player economies because they get so big and so like they can get ruined so fast and so yes now we have things like if you sell an item it's gone like unless you want to buy it back within an hour or so no one else can buy it and all of a sudden it's gone and so it takes it out of the economy and makes sure that item doesn't get worthless right or That's item, true. or item decays and all that and so do we think this is a good thing a bad thing or a necessary thing well you need economic sinks I thought it was pretty brilliant though I complained a lot at the time in EQ2 when they put in the um, binding system if you had oh, I know. worn yeah. a piece of armor it wouldn't give you beneficial effects until you bound it to you and then it was yours and only yours and suck it up buttercup um, I thought that was brilliant and yeah. took a lot and I could see them doing something similar I guess they'll just have to qualify which items would need to be bindable in Landmark because rather than necessarily being gear based, it's going to be tool based and resource based. Yeah. So how do you really bind a bucket of rocks to you? <laughs> you know. Yeah. So yeah. things to think about. I know. I remember. I actually remember that moment in the game. I think it was like the Split Paw Saga adventure pack or whatever. It was like the first adventure pack. That oh, came that out. was fun. It was. But that was one of the updates then was when they added binding, that binding system. And a lot of people were so mad. Like, this is terrible. Like, <laughs> it, Why did you do this but, to me? But it was, it, was a syst- <laughs> it was a system that we weren't used to, right? But then now we go on MMOs and you bind an item to you and the, you can only sell it. You can't trade it. It's a common thing now, right? Mm-hmm. Because it works. It's, and I it's, like it. It's a necessary thing, yeah. And, and we learned a yeah, lot. Yeah, but... Right? I like to see a combination of it, kind of what Liette said. You know, have the item, it's tradable, unless you want the, the full benefits of it. Because yeah. kind of the best of both worlds. Yeah, and we still yeah. see that, right? Like in some like raid zones, if you think, a lot of the items are bind on pickup or, or bind on equip. But, mm-hmm. but a lo- or bind on, bind on equip items that you could still sell as long as you don't equip it, right? So it's like yes. kind of a little balance. But Make like, sure you don't double click that thing. Yeah, don't. don't <laughs> oh, I, put it on. I wanted to see what it looked like on me, and I didn't. I didn't know. And so, yeah. So, any any thoughts, Memo? Um, this is all. I was. I never played EQ one. I was very briefly in EQ two because I could not find a good guild at the time. Where were you guys? Um, <laughs> From we across, were man. So that's all <laughs> kind of. I was on Everfrost. Yeah, that's all kind of news to me about you know the the lore and the the stories you had going along with those games. But the bind on pickup and bind and equip that is a very old debate and games handle it differently like you know especially with raids by handing out tokens so you get this many tokens that many tokens or some gear it still drops I think a mix of that is what works best I don't think being able to equip the best set in the game wear it till you get your next set and then sell it I don't think that's a viable option for any economy because then you can basically go buy you know full raid sets Mm -hmm. which is not the yeah, point of a, the game. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, I, I didn't even try, but I have a whole raid set of gear. <laughs> I don't even know how to raid, but I have a raid set. <laughs> so yeah, but we'll we'll see how this works out because I'm sure we're gonna see what the economy is kind of like in EverQuest Landmark, and then see how how is that gonna flood over to EverQuest next? Like, kind of almost get a preview of what it'd be like with the crafting system and the building system, and see how that's gonna work out in EverQuest next. I'm sure it'll be like a economy beta test for EverQuest Next, right? And that's not necessarily a bad thing. No, not I'm at all. Really like, cool with that. Yeah, it's like almost like like how um, how polished is EverQuest Next going to be after we're all using the tools and and creating all these things for EverQuest Next? They're going to be able to 
create something maybe the players do want, right? Because they're going to see exactly oh. what we build and exactly what we want in Landmark. All depends how many of the EQN mechanics end up in Landmark. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, supposedly everything, right? Eventually. Yep, that's what they say. I hope so. <laughs> that's, what, that's what they say. I just want to get in. There's, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. That's what she said. But, um... <laughs> But next, um, on their live stream, I only got to watch half. <laughs> I only got to watch half the live stream uh, because then, um, by the time I got to it, they took it off because I guess there was problems with it. But um, they did say they're gonna make sure to put it up again later on, so we could talk about it next week or parts about the claims and and more about that but they did mention about their campus event that we all got an email for last week right on the 31st and so they're inviting everybody so if you're near san diego which none of us are i think i'm the closest and i'm in san francisco so i'm a good eight hour drive away oh, that's not far and that's not far to, yeah eight hour okay eight hour drive away well, they say they will show you a short demo, which may be 10 to 15 minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. So you're going to get to touch the game for, like, this little bit. So I was like, I almost thought about it, but then when they said that, I was like, uh, I don't know if I'd drive eight hours for a 15-minute demo or whatever, right? Certainly it's got to be more than a 15-minute demo. They've got to have things for people to do there for sure. No, 15 minutes. That's well, you like, can stop the devs. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's fine. Yeah, exa exactly. So it th is Sony. The, so <laughs> this is what the the reason they gave is th they're literally coming to SOE, right? So this isn't like a convention center or everything. They're coming to SOE to play the game, and over a thousand people have already RSVP'd. And so you can imagine a thousand people at this dev studio trying to play this game, and and it's we still got two more weeks left before. More people, people can wandering ours. around the campus. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so they said that it's more of like a celebration for EverQuest. So they said the demand is so great. They're saying they're going to have just this short demo that you're going to get your hands on. They're going to show you a few things. You're not going to be on the alpha server. Server. You're not going to be playing like a, a real part of the game. You're not going to create your name or anything. Like it's not going to be connected to you in any way. It's just this almost like a convention where you get to touch this for 15 minutes and that's it get out of the way next people are coming right but they said if while that's you're waiting cool. yeah yeah they said while you're waiting you can talk to the devs everquest one devs two even everquest next there's gonna be contests food trucks i don't know if food trucks are big where you guys are but here in california they're like they're like huge love me some food trucks i'll have those Oh, we don't have them either. We have like Korean, no, Mexican food trucks. We do not have trucks. food trucks. Check. Oh, it's a California thing then. But it's great. Yes. Food trucks. I'll talk to you guys about food trucks later then. But <laughs> th they said to bring games, bring board games and stuff. So it's almost like this just, com you would go for like the community and just talking with the devs and talking uh, with everyone else who's excited about EQ. But to actually hands on. You might only get maybe 15 minutes or more if you're lucky. Hey, whoop. I see him in the background. <laughs> oh. Hey, oh. Keeper. Thank you. <laughs> uh, see, look it. So <laughs> that actually comes into play, what he just did. Because <laughs> what they are looking for are some real-life stories from people who have met through games. Did you, didn't you guys meet through... Thank you too. Yeah, Everybody he was too much. So they're they yeah. are looking for that. <laughs> they're looking for real life stories from EQ, whether it's a marriage, you named a child after after something in EverQuest, which would be terrible. But um, <laughs> my my kid is named Lockjaw, um, <laughs> or like even oh best friend, like how how many friends how many good friends do we have now because of EverQuest, right? Like how many people have we known for years and years? Oh yeah, that because of this. I is, still. Yep. <laughs> hey. Is, yeah, and they're looking for those stories, so we can email them. Them, we can make a video about it, or we can type up the story or whatever. They're looking for these, these stories, these events in our lives that EverQuest has made, and it's it's a game, but it's connected our lives in ways that we never thought a game could, right? Absolutely. And so they're looking for these stories, and so on the live stream. 
So Liet, if you and Whoop wanna tell about <laughs> your long, the first time you saw Whoop and Antonica or something, I don't know. You can send. I think that he was in. an angry little monk on a raid, quite <laughs> frankly. <laughs> he had a bad attitude. <laughs> Oh, this guy keeps yeah, I can talk about that. This guy keeps playing death <laughs> and killing us all, and then he gets he up. He keeps and... playing dead every time I talk to him. I know. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But then um, they talked about another thing that's going to be an alpha once we get in. Yay. I hope we get in soon. Can't they're, come soon enough. They're going to have this cool thing called d dev talk. So, because they're mentioning when when we get into this game, this game is really an alpha. It's not no beta test or like uh, this polished game. We're gonna get in and be like, ooh, like this is buggy or this isn't working. They're like, no, you really get in the game in a really early state, and we know that, right? I keep mentioning they don't even have water in the game. When we actually look at the game, every time we see it, there's like new interface stuff, and they're they're working a lot of on a lot of stuff, but they're gonna have this thing called Dev Talk. And so first there will be like a link where it have an outline of where the dev team is heading. So we're going to be playing the, with these tools, but then we can see what tools they're going to have coming up. Like we're working on this tool, we're working on this tool, or I know you've seen this or whatever, we're working on this, or we're working on the gold mining animation or whatever. But then eventually it'll be almost like in-game, they're going to have like sticky notes everywhere. So you go up to this item in a game and it's like, there's a sticky note on it. You see the dev says, oh, working on this, working on the look, or working <laughs> on the animation, right? I've and seen that somewhere. I don't. Was it Neverwinter they had sticky notes memo? Kind of, sort of? I don't think so. I don't think that was Neverwinter. Yes, but, but then we can add to this. We can actually interact with the devs. So we're going to post on their sticky note saying, hey, tweak this a little bit. Or I, you can let them know I really like this. We never complain about things we like, right? So, but let <laughs> nope, them know. What, not let, usually. <laughs> let or them know. Fix them. Yeah, let them let them know we we like this or keep it this way or whatever. Or, or we could tell them this just needs this little bit of tweaking. So they want they really want this like we're helping them build this game. So let's help them build the game that we want, right? Like absolutely. And so, what do you guys think about this interaction and kind of like almost this in game? dev talk that we're going to be able to have with the devs to actually really affect it's not just did you like this quest one two three four five it's like really this interaction with them well as i understood it when you click on it you not only hear their verbal you know what they were trying to do or see the script or whatever you can also give feedback on a forum format as i understood it yeah. Um, yeah. I like, just like right now, it'll be a forum, but eventually it'll be something like in game where we can. You can click on something. You can see all the sticky notes all over the world, and be like, "Oh, I want to add something to this, so that when someone comes along and looks at this, they'll know about that certain item or whatever." I just hope they don't get trolled too much, you know. <laughs> No, they knew who was that there. Yeah. Well, Omid there said will be he trolling. was. Omid said he was going to troll too. He, because he said they're they're gonna have this thing where you're gonna get to rate people what people built and stuff and he's like you can rate give them a thumbs down that was terrible or whatever but you can do whatever <laughs> you want. Um, no I think it's a brilliant idea it, it it is a way for the community to interact with the development team and that's always good because you know how many times in all the MMOs we've been in over the years we've seen something and it hadn't just been a single person's opinion it's been what is this and why is it here? And it's just there for no particular reason at all. Or or it doesn't fit with the rest of what you're doing. So I, yeah. I think that's really a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely be cool. And so Memo, I'm not sure how many beta alpha tests you've been in, but to have this <laughs> uh, uh, a lot. All of them. <laughs> all of all of them. That's the answer. But um have you ever seen this kind of interaction? In any of uh, there was a good interaction with, with Neverwinter when it was in Alpha. I was in that from very, very early Alpha, and it there was a lot of back and forth, and you would actually have you know um, developers stopping in games and in in game and holding little events to test things out. And you would actually be PvPing or doing a group event with the devs, and that was that was really good. 
that would that really made you feel like your feedback mattered and i think that's important because in a lot of these games you will when you're playing in the alpha or beta you will bug something 10 times you know 20 other people that have bugged it 10 times and four more builds down the road they still haven't done anything about it so you know this will be success as successful as you know how they react to the feedback yeah and so it, it'll definitely be cool because it's just not like a normal beta test where they just ask you like on this survey or whatever but yeah, just one to like, five yeah one to five or or please report this it's like you're gonna really feel like you're helping build the game like shape how, how many times did you get that survey popping up on your screen when something suddenly broadsided you <laughs> yeah exactly like, <laughs> it's like click 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 uh, oh no. uh, i loved it man i loved it get out of my face five, <laughs> yeah, five. <exactly. laughs> i don't care yeah. and then they they objectively look at this oh everyone would like this so when this happened like i wonder why that was because we were mm -hmm. just trying to click out of it really 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 yep. fast yeah so yeah and then akikos wants to know is that like a, a phone r2d2 behind you or liet oh um that i got on my honeymoon and or this this is all about love tonight apparently anyway but uh <laughs> got that on my honeymoon in orlando um and it held a lot of popcorn, which is my favorite snack. So sweet. It's got a little it's handle on it. It's a popcorn holder. <laughs> yes. Now yes. we know what to really cook at the get together. Yeah. Uh -huh. We'd cook up some popcorn. Popcorn. Yep. There we I can go. bring my air pop thing. It's really good. Okay. Very good. See, that's actually not really a helmet behind me. It's actually a, uh, a piggy bank. So, ah. nice. so yeah. From Disneyland. Fancy. Disneyland. <laughs> yes. I so hope yeah. it holds more money than any piggy bank I own. <laughs> it has a few quarters in it. It'll be good. So yeah, but um, and then they eventually they talked about the claims and everything, which we'll save for next week when, because they said they'd had to take the video down, and they're actually going to put more videos up, more YouTube videos and everything to be more specific about claims and how they work, which is really what we've been all wondering about is like how are claims going to yes. work. Yes. Um, from what I saw, it's just going to be like you're going to choose this one spot. And it's not too big, right? But you can see everybody's claims if you turn on the part of the interface. And you I can really like that. Yeah, and you can have multiple claims. No one could build above you or below you and everything. And so it's it, going to be like a land rush. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And so we'll, we'll see more t details on that, and we'll have that next week to talk about. And so we can complain or agree with them on that next week. And so that's all we have for this evening. Thank you, Steele, for coming on. Pleasure, sir. And talking, our guild leader for our next our EverQuest Next Guild, Liet. Thank you. Thank our you XO. for having me. And Memo, our resident non-guild officer person. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. I don't for, know about uh, that. Including me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. we know about that. No, but he's yeah. He, he just gonna keep <laughs> saying no. And I'm going to yeah, just okay. be like, I'm too busy. I, I got to, I just want to play. Oh, we got plans I know where to find you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But thanks, every, everybody, uh, for watching. Um, thanks for being on the cast. Uh, remember to follow us on Twitter at Grievance Gaming. You can see it right here. Go to our website over here, grievancegaming.org. <laughs> um, follow us or make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube. Watch our, all our other shows. We have... Uh, what do we have? Wild Star cast. We got a Final Fantasy cast starting up. We have a World of Warcraft cast. League uh, of Legends. League, League, Legends League of Legends come Monday night. Monday, Monday night. We got our uh, Star Citizen cast, which everyone's loving. Thank you, Memo, for doing that. And uh, I can't even think of his name right now. Thamen and Thamen Whoop. And Whoop. Yep. So we have a lot of stuff coming out. So go to our YouTube video if you happen to not be able to watch it here on twitch follow us here on twitch so you can get notified when we're going live and i think our next cast is this sunday right or are you guys doing a uh, star citizen this week uh, there was one last saturday so it will be next Tuesday. saturday okay so this sunday we'll probably have grievance news right still yes sir yep so there we go so everyone thanks for watching and we'll see you at the end of the week See y'all later. Thanks all.